Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, so hi everyone and welcome back to the Digital Nomads World Weekly Lecture and happy Valentine's Day. Um, today's is, I guess, keeping in theme. We're speaking with Aline from Nomad Soulmates. Um, so welcome, Aline. Hi, everybody. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Happy Valentine's. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining me today. Um, yeah, no I guess I'm going to start off by asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself. So can you start by telling me where you are from and where you are right now? Sure. So I'm originally from Germany and I'm currently in Bali. <laughs> well, I mostly live here, so yeah. Cool, yeah. I haven't been to Bali, but it's on the, on the list to go to. Um, so oh, I guess... Nice. Yeah, <laughs> let's start um, with a little bit of background about you. So um, today I want to talk to you obviously about re relationships um, and dating as digital nomads, but I want to kind of take it back a bit and start with how your remote journey began and kind of what you do as a digital nomad. Yeah, absolutely. So hmm, it's been a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it's around six years when I started Nomad Soulmates. A community for single remote workers and location independent people. Um, and to my background, I cannot say too much because honestly, I don't have a professional background besides being an entrepreneur. Um, I started pretty much right after school. I had a year of backpacking and I really wanted a way to continue traveling and, and working because working on the road because um, it was just that time when I think it was quite not popular but it was mm -hmm. starting to become a trend back in Germany at least I stumbled over a blog and that kind of opened an entire world for me where I was like wow I actually don't need to go to study let me do this other way <laughs> and mm -hmm. then so all my friends, they kind of studied and chose something, but I, for myself, I chose, um, yeah, to, to make this work as a remote worker and uh, I did. So I guess I started back then as a virtual assistant, but my, in my heart, I'm an entrepreneur. And um, so, yeah, I just did like um, side gigs along the way. So yeah, actually that leads quite nicely into my next question. So. Um, you started by backpacking and you wanted to kind of find a way to fund that to keep on the road. Yes. So when you started as a virtual assistant, um, was that kind of like full time or did you have kind of other bits of work? I guess, like, how did you um, begin your remote work journey? Uh, it was not full time. So in the beginning, it's uh, been it was hard, actually, because you need to make connections first. You need to learn how to, you know, price yourself you need to overcome all these um obstacles <laughs> mm -hmm. and like meeting like finding clients and it was a whole new world to me and I was so upset I remember that school just doesn't teach you that but that's a whole other thing <laughs> and um so yeah so I I started then however to um be on a conference and for remote workers and there I got my first few clients and that taught me oh it's it's actually possible i can do this and uh from referrals in my own network then it happened <clears throat> quite naturally that i got gig after gig after gig and that funded my travels yeah and then i guess at what point um did you start nomad soulmates it was also right at that conference <laughs> so um yeah it was right at that conference in berlin where a lot of where well, I met just a lot of other people who had the same interests as me which was mm -hmm. um, interesting and exciting because otherwise it was always just me myself and back then I was single I met a lot of other people who were single at the conference and uh, I back then wasn't really sure what I still want to do however I mm -hmm. knew that I'm interested in that 
uh, dynamic between men and women and how do we work <laughs> so and what you know what is attraction that was already a topic i was excited about and so i was like why is there no dating thing for remote workers this mm -hmm. you know back then literally nothing existed and yeah so it took me still half a year or so after that conference to go over my shadows and actually start something but then eventually i um founded the nomad soulmates facebook group and that's when everything else kind of uh yeah built up on that so it started initially as a facebook group kind of an online community i guess and from there it's just kind of grown over time Absolutely. Yeah. So we had, um, I think in the first few days, I think uh, around 300, 400, I don't even know, people joining right away. And to me, this was like, okay, this is a demand. You know, um, I had no idea that I knew I wanted this, but that that many people wanted this um, type of service or you know, just connect with people who are also single and remote working. That just really was integrated back in those days. And yeah, and I then took it very seriously because I saw this is, first of all, a gap um, that <clears throat> needs to be solved, but really also an important issue to be addressed because I myself believe a lot into this remote working lifestyle because it gives you all this freedom. It gives people, mm -hmm. um, you know, power to the people a little bit because you can design your own days and create your own life. And, and so for me, back five years ago, this was, I knew this was the future of how we're going to work in uh, the next years. And uh, it's proven to be right that we're going in that direction. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so so I wanted that nomads not only have, you know, the freedom of traveling and working, but also mm -hmm. do it in a meaningful way and have relationships uh, being possible because back then it seemed to be like absolutely impossible. So I wanted to prove people wrong and show it is uh, definitely something you can have. Yeah, it's yeah, it's an interesting one. I guess if you're always kind of on the go, it can be a yeah. challenge sometimes to make kind of, um, I guess, solid friendships or connections. Yeah. Um, so I guess after you had the Facebook group and kind of started to build it up, um, where did you go from that next, or what was the next kind of journey for Nomad Soulmates? So we experimented a little bit. Um, I was back then just by myself. And um, when, what we did was uh, doing retreats and in-person meetups. I uh, even did blind dates. And I really like the challenges. And I really like tried everything in the group to just mm -hmm. get people connected and see yeah, what works, what doesn't work. The blind dating, for example, was a total... Um, yeah, it was not going well. <laughs> but, you know, you test and you learn. And on that journey, I think it was um, a year in or so when uh, I was, okay, I'm going to match people now. Let's do matching. And I matched them in, I remember, Excel sheets. It was highly complicated. Mm -hmm. um, but it was fun. And we got, I think, 300 matches through that Excel sheet. But it was that time when I met my uh, co-founder, Sebastian, who is like, let me help you with this. <laughs> he is a, a really great programmer. And uh, we met up in Colanta actually the first time, but we didn't speak much then. And then in Bali, I came to Bali and, and it was my first day here and it was his last day, but we met at the beach had some dinner and he was like, yeah, would you, would you like some help with this? And I was so glad he asked. And I think it wasn't still like six months after or so that we actually didn't really work with each other, but then we started working with each other. And so now uh, building an app together and we've previously worked on our website. So yeah, it's fun. <laughs> and um, I guess, so would you say, <clears throat> so I guess as a, single nomad when you started this um, I guess you were able to kind of 
have your own experiences of trying to like date whilst being a nomad um what would you say some of the biggest challenges are that people face when they're dating as a digital nomad yeah um well that's the part i really want to help with right Uh, the challenges that are so common are that um it's really hard to make meaningful relationships and friendships while you on the road and of course everyone has different um speeds of travel travel speeds and it used to like many of the nomads they travel once um, like a month and then they go to the next destination Mm -hmm. and of course it makes it hard for um something more meaningful to develop but then i think with now i think the trend shifted as well a little bit because people are more slow traveling and i'm sure COVID has uh (laughs) it takes play with that yeah Yeah. so now i think it's shifted also where people really want to slow down more and actually take the time and make connections Um, but yeah nevertheless it's definitely still a challenge when you travel you meet people that come and go of course and even if you don't travel, me here in Bali, I see many people come and go. And yeah. so just making friendships, it can be difficult for sure. Um, yeah, that I think that's one of the biggest ones. And of course, loneliness is a huge yeah. one. Like, yeah, you're spending so much time by yourself. So definitely, I think that's a big one too. Yeah, I think that's something that perhaps people don't always... Um, get to talk about or even perhaps realize when they enter a remote work lifestyle is the kind of constant change it can be difficult to build a reliable community or to become part of one because everyone's always moving and everything's always changing Um, do you think loneliness is a common problem uh, among digital nomads yeah I think everybody knows (laughs) or has been at that at that uh, spot, I guess, where, you know, where, or not everybody, I don't want to take that on, but Mm -hmm. I'm sure many (laughs) um, can relate to that, definitely, where you are maybe in a crowded place, maybe you're surrounded by friends, but, like, are you surrounded by true, real friends? That is always Mm -hmm. the question, are you, um, yeah, so I know people here living in Bali, and they come here, uh, spend months here, and they tell me, they didn't have any friends like true friends in the mm-hmm. first three months and I was like wow that's really a problem because of course you don't want to um yeah we as human beings I guess we we all seek and need the persons that we can talk to and we're gonna mm-hmm. miss uh, for sure home and the friends we used to have where we can you know to our hearts you out any- <laughs> yeah yeah um, would you have any tips to give anyone who is perhaps feeling lonely as a digital nomad? Yeah, definitely. So uh, it's always easier to say it than done. I know that. <laughs> but there's definitely ways I think you can Im- make improvements to that. And um, it can start so little, by, like so easy by going out of the house. You know, just like mm-hmm. I think often we're... Um, very comfortable then with ourselves and we may might be trapped by thoughts and I'm actually feeling okay being alone but then not realizing that when we are going outside of the house that it's really refreshing our mind and so um, yeah connected getting out of the house doing new activities and uh, for me what helped me especially when I was single I'm not single anymore but um, was definitely connecting with people in co-working spaces and I use the co-working spaces not just for work I definitely use them for community Mm -hmm. and to see are there people at the community at the space that I am riding the same wave and you know I'm not always looking for oh I'm going you know I want to be in um and for me quality is quantity uh no Wait, quantity? No, there's a word. So for me, less is more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know Qu- quality, so, not quantity. Yes, that's what I wanted yeah. to say. 
um, so I definitely was looking at, okay, but who am I vibing with? And then, you know, making, um, like to proactively asking, should we go on a coffee or should we um, do a, at Bansko, for example, I invited Julia, let's go skiing. And we both never mm -hmm. been skiing or snowboarding before. And uh, so in the end, it bonded us really together. And um, yeah, we were both glad that we did it because it was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and then that relationship has something some more some more depth i think especially if you go on activities together yeah i think definitely experiencing something with someone else helps to yeah. build a more meaningful friendship but it can sometimes be a bit of a challenge to make that first all the initial kind of communication or that first jump yeah yeah definitely and i understand when it feels hard because some people they just don't feel that social um, or maybe more introverts and so I totally understand that it's not uh, as easy for everyone um, I would say I'm a very social person but I can also feel very comfortable being alone and then realizing huh maybe I've been alone a bit too long now so let's you know get out of the house and do something new and that always is that always helps yeah yeah, I think definitely um, getting out and doing things um, is a big one for combating kind of the loneliness and, yeah, making connections. Um, yeah, so I was... just going... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, good. Um, going back to the Nomad Soulmates, um, can you tell us any success stories of couples from your community? Yeah, of course, absolutely. I mean, that is the thing I'm so, so proud of that it actually works, you know. Um, we have so many beautiful couples. So oh, I just recently had an, um, a panel discussion with actually two, two souls. They, they met on our website, actually. Mm -hmm. And they yeah they met on the website they both aligned with their interests i think she was she was like i really want a more meaningful connection and um, i'm more enjoying the rivers and the forest and i think he's doing forest work so it was like amazing okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah so so they met up and they now in canada having uh, so she has a child uh, pre from um, uh, I think she, her child is already like six, seven years old, if I'm not okay. mistaken. And uh, it was so beautifully, to, beautiful to see that um, it's possible as well for single um, women, uh, for women with uh, as a single parent, you know, to make new connections on our website. And ah, uh, it's so beautiful. And now they have a. A baby now together as well I think she's pregnant at the moment mm -hmm. so yeah definitely that is um, one of our cup uh, success stories and they're so much so in love with each other oh my god it's so nice to see <laughs> yeah. and uh, then there's Sebastian my co-founder who found love as well through an online speed dating event we hosted mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> was actually in beta back then we were testing and his now wife uh, joined the speed dating event so they're absolutely amazing as well super super sweet couple and who else there's Kami and Jorgen in Bansko in Bulgaria who met at our retreat that they have a baby now as well so yeah absolutely we have <laughs> quite a few people who that's not just a couple of those um of the many that we have yeah and that's really nice that I guess you get to watch the de development and you get to watch the kind of relationships bloom definitely it's so nice really it's such a rewarding work so um I guess this is going a bit more into like the technical side of how um nomad soulmates works but how do you match people do you get them to kind of fill in a questionnaire if they join and then you look for similarities in um their skills or uh, hobbies they enjoy how do you kind of match people sure yeah um 
So first of all, what we want to make sure and that is on top priority is that the people who join our community are, um, yeah, that they are quality people. So we really try to, uh, it's very natural and very normal for dating uh, websites and apps that, you know, um, that there's a spam going through and <laughs> black sheep's coming through. Mm -hmm. So it's important that for us that we put a wall there um, and that we review profiles before they join us. So that goes for the Facebook group and it also goes for um, everything else we're building really. And uh, so that's the first. So people who are joining us, they and approved, they know that the people inside our community, they are looking for meaningful relationships. They are nomads or at least transitioning or interested in that lifestyle so that interests match up there already. And um, then we give it really to the people. So why we are of course offering our features such as you know filters, uh, all mm -hmm. types of filters, and they will be uh, a lot more coming in the future, you know, where we are matching people. Are they slow travelers? Are they um, big, like um, home, do they have home bases? Are they have, do van lives, you know? there's so much variety as well in between mm -hmm. our different lifestyles so we want to make sure that we're able to match these get, offer these type of filters um but really it's like we give it to you and you are customizing it yourself so absolutely and uh, also we match travel plans so if you want to for example go to Bansko for Bansko fest then um for the nomad fest then you could type that in and see uh, other people that match with your travel plans as well. So you could even, um, this event is happening in the future, you could connect now and then, you know, continue the connection there in person. Yeah, that's really cool. So I guess, um, do you find a lot of people use um, like the Facebook group and the, the website? Um, just for even finding like travel buddies if you can search by like place like yeah. is, do you get that as well as people that are looking for relationships absolutely yeah absolutely we get lots of people who are looking for friends travel buddies and we have that quite a lot also in the Facebook group people constantly make posts hey I'm in uh somewhere in Germany and, and and in Berlin is anyone around I want to meet for coffee so we definitely have these location shout outs a lot and where people just you know yeah they may look for a date but as well definitely for friends and keep it the most people actually also enjoy keeping it open so that mm -hmm. anything can happen you know <laughs> yeah no that's great I think it's um I think it's really cool that you can search for um, like location or for travel plans because I imagine that um, is a concern yeah. for people when they're thinking about entering a relationship or dating is the kind of unknown of where the person's going to go next and do you join them like do you change your plans to suit them yeah, when, yeah. Um, no, so yeah. Uh, I have a, another question for you um I guess this is more to do with like once someone starts dating. Um, do you think it can be intense sometimes for people to start dating whilst they're traveling together? Um, because you already have the kind of stresses of travel and then the stresses of perhaps starting a relationship. Um, do you, like if you think it's a bit overwhelming for people, do you have any tips or anything that you could recommend um, people to kind of, I guess, combat this? Um, yeah, I can definitely see people might be overwhelmed um, with that. Mm -hmm. Hang on a second, I need to, yeah, <laughs> my laptop. Um, so I guess that everybody is different, of course. Um, I always enjoy it, actually. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I, I'm up for the challenge and like, traveling dating. Um, now I'm not dating anymore, but I take my boyfriend <laughs> with me on my travels. So it's actually really fun, I think, to go mm -hmm. on adventures together. However, yeah, we definitely had um, 
people before saying, and I saw that trend where, you know, nomads are very independent and they love uh-huh. their freedom. So there can definitely be situations, I think, where one person wants to go this way, the other person wants to go that way. And so now if I, suddenly you like need to con- have a conversation and need to um, compromise and, and agree on things. And I, I guess that is something when you're so independent before and so um, you know, able to make your plans always on, alone and spontaneously on the fly, that this is definitely a change. And I always enjoy it because uh-huh. for me, it's another opportunity to get to know the other person. Um, and I honestly don't see a compromise necessarily as a bad thing. It's really uh-huh. just about, it's a good compromise when both are happy. Otherwise, it's not a compromise in my opinion. Um, so, so I would rather suggest as a tip to see that compromise as a good thing, an opportunity to connect further rather than a bad thing. And uh, like a lim- I think it's easy to see this as a maybe a limiting belief that you as a nomad are now limited being in a relationship mm-hmm. and having to follow the other person around or the other way, you know. <laughs> so. so I guess would you suggest that um, perhaps they talk about it and have those kinds of conversations I guess early on when they're dating about where they want to go and kind of um, I guess talking about how they feel rather than perhaps leaving it to the last minute. I would definitely say that this um, that this probably should be discussed because Mm -hmm. it's the type of lifestyle most likely both are living don't have it too early you don't want to kill the romance and the sparks right <laughs> off the bat <laughs> with like very serious questions but I would say definitely like um yeah set your expectations you know understand where what what is it that you want and um if the other person wants something completely different it's good to know that early on for sure yeah yeah. yeah, I think that's something that um, can perhaps be difficult, especially as a, a remote worker. If you think you're kind of moving on, then perhaps you go in with a mindset of um, not like kind of you already have pre like concepts of how a relationship might go because you know you're going to leave or something. So I guess yeah. it's good to have those kind of discussions. Yeah. And then we also have couples, you know, who um they travel together but then there might be Mm -hmm. periods where she or he has to go somewhere for a trip maybe it's a business trip even or visiting family and then you reunite at a later stage or later point and um yeah it's a long distance relationships are often also a common thing and i think in our um in our circles yeah yeah um I guess this is a a slightly different type of question, but um, do you ever see any issues with, um, I guess, like with passports, with relationships from people that are in from very different kind of countries, like any issues with them getting visas to be able to stay together or things like that? Definitely. I mean, I experienced this by myself. My Mm -hmm. partner is from Indonesia and Indonesia, of course, is not... uh, um, the passport is not as strong as the German one. I can go pretty much wherever I want. And for him, it's so difficult. And just to get to Germany was such an act. I think he had, mm-hmm. uh, he did his paper. He did, he did not get an agent <laughs> to join me to Germany. He did it by himself. I think it was mm-hmm. a pile of paperwork that big. He had to we had to submit to the immigration our chat that we're really in a relationship. I mean, you know, pictures of us. I've never had this in my life before Mm -hmm. that I had to give this to like some third party. I have no idea what they do with this. Um, Interesting, very interesting. It's difficult. And we have, however, such a strong connection very, very fast the both of us and um yeah he joined me to Germany and our when we dated I think we were in a relationship 
for already six months or so. Mm -hmm. And yeah, my dad had to help um, with an invitation letter, I remember. It was definitely not easy. It was possible, but it was not easy. And so you really go through something together when you do that. Um, and it might be difficult. It's challenging for the relationship, for sure. Um, I know some persons have already contacted me about this direct issue. Like, how do we do this as nomads? Where mm -hmm. she's from, I think she was from Thailand or Vietnam. And he also from somewhere in Europe. And they wanted to marry, and it was this whole complicated situation. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, just because actually they just wanted to get married, well, of course, because of love, but then also yeah. because of the traveling part. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Do you think? Um, I guess from your from nomad soulmates, do you see a lot of nomads getting married? Do you think that's um also for love but also just because of making things more easy like there's quite a few countries where if you're traveling with a partner um if you're not married and something happens to that person you're not always considered as direct family so it's actually kind of more beneficial to be married are you seeing do you see that a lot within your platform um i think it's a mix definitely mm -hmm. not everyone wants to be married um there's definitely souls that out there who um i just want to be in a relationship and i guess that's again very individual yeah. but i would say that it makes when you are in a committed relationship it makes it definitely easier i know it from the story of sebastian and his wife claudia they also married because then finally he could stay a lot um better easier in in europe for longer mm -hmm. and, and don't have to go to canada after the visa Schen the schengen visa expires so so they i think once you're in a committed relationship probably those conversations make sense um to get married and we definitely have lots of married couples actually um, but then again, I remember, especially when I started this group five years ago, <laughs> that there was this huge trend of people like, I'm not getting a house, I'm not getting a baby, I'm not getting married, <laughs> you know. Um, so it was this uh, rebellious type of vibe. And I definitely think that it's now more getting into, you know what, I actually just care about meaningful relationships. And uh, if this is, uh, I, I definitely feel the trend that people would go now further with like, it's okay to be married. I mean, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. And um, yeah, I would say the trend is more and more going up actually. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So I think, um, I guess the one of the biggest things about being a digital nomad is having freedom to kind of move <laughs> about wherever you want, whenever you want. So perhaps um commitment or making those kinds of like solid decisions can be quite challenging for someone who wants the freedom to move around definitely it's a lifetime it's a change yeah yeah sure. yeah um so we're coming towards the end of our talk so i just have one last question to ask you um what one piece of advice would you give to other nomads who are looking for a soulmate <laughs> um to I always say this um to be yourself and in, in the truest way and shape or form because I think this is the most powerful way that attraction works you like living you living your best nomadic life and you know enjoying the journey and being yourself and loving yourself I think that's the key to uh, attract someone else who wants to to join you on that so I think uh, we get this question a lot and um, I don't want to over complicate it it's we are as still human and you know connections work still the same dating as a nomad or not so I think um, yeah that's what I think I want to share with people yeah, thank you. Um, so thank you again for joining me today. 
Um, if anyone wants to get in contact with you or is interested in joining Soul Nomad Soul the Nomad Soulmates, um, <laughs> where is best for them to head head to? So you uh, feel welcome to email me at Aline and then at nomadsoulmates.com or just simply join our Facebook group. Um, you will find it as well under Nomad Soulmates. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thanks well. again for everyone who joined us today. Um, yeah. Next week, I will be speaking with Anthony Minkowski from Remote Camp. So um, if you're interested in traveling with groups of other nomads to cool places, then join us next week where I'll be chatting to him about his trips. And thanks again, Alina, for joining me. Um, yeah, and happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Bye.